Pal here with more Space Engineers, and today we're going to uh, do something that was requested by a couple of people fairly recently, and it's an ongoing conversation we've had before, talking about the LCD uh, script, Automatic LCD 2 by M Master. Um, it's the script that I'm using that regulates pretty much all of the output and displays and things that you've seen in uh, on the ships, in the control panels, all of that stuff. And so I've had people asking for a little bit more of an in-depth review, and so let's, uh, let's talk about this thing a little bit. So the first thing you need to understand is that when you're configuring these things, let's go in here really quick. Let's grab our auto LCD, and we're gonna edit this. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna, if you wanna use the script, you have to subscribe to it, obviously. When you're in the game, you come over to Browse Scripts, you find it, it should be somewhere over here. If you don't see it, do a quick refresh. Um, sometimes Space Engineers doesn't update when you get into the game. It's it's Space Engineers. Um, but yeah, all you have to do is left click it, copy to editor. It'll copy it. If you want to run the check, you can. I don't worry about this one because and master is really good about making sure the script works before they update it. Um, but once it's loaded, it's running. That's all you have to do. Okay. So as you can see, it's booting up. It'll take it a minute because I've got a bunch of LCDs that are running the script. Come on. Uh, toggle you off, toggle you on. Okay. So once it's loaded, what you're going to want to do is any LCD that you want controlled by the script, you need to append in open bracket, capital LCD, close bracket. Now the, it is case sensitive, so you do want to, need to make sure you're doing this, otherwise it won't operate correctly. Um, you can actually use like here i could just put the brackets around the existing lcd tag um, but i don't for for my own internal reasons uh, with the way that i manage the the data systems so once it's done we go in here you're going to want to set your display to be text and images and then you're going to come up to custom data and this is where you're going to actually be using the commands in the system. All right. So what we're actually going to do is look at the syntax of how things need to be applied in the, in the commands in order to get things to work properly. So you have to remember that it always starts with a command. There may be a modifier on that command, which is you're using something like, say, the inventory. Uh, there's a couple of letters that you can add to the word that you leave. So you do inventory capital S, for example, and that'll do something different than inventory capital X, as in xylophone. Um, you then need generally need to identify what the target block or group is, and then any additional arguments after that. So in the example, we have inventory capital S asterisk, which means we want it to look at every inventory on the grid, regardless of who owns it, right? Um, so if you've got ships connected, it's going to check everything that it can. And then we want it to, to display or ingots and components. So now if we come over here and we put that very command in, right? So we're going to say inventory S asterisk and we're going to tell it to add or ingot and component and basically you get a whole lot of information right okay so now that that is the absolute rudimentary basics of how the system works Let's talk about some details in here now. So we're going to come back in here. I'm going to open this up and we're going to get rid of this so that we don't have these scrolling wall of text. 
And now let's talk about what you can actually do and ways to do things in the system. All right, so there are times when you're gonna to wanna to do things like a specific grid. So let's say I only wanna know what's in inventory on this in the base. I don't care about which ships are connected. I don't care about you know anything that isn't actually on the primary grid. All right, so what I would do is say inventory and we're going to tell it S because we want everything. Uh, we are going to then say curly bracket T colon and then close curly bracket. Now, if you're not going to look for specific blocks on the grid, you can actually get rid of the curly brackets and say T colon asterisk. And that'll tell it all blocks, all blocks with inventory on this grid and only this grid. So it won't look at connected ships. It won't look at um, if you've got vehicles that are transporting things around. It won't look at anything, even if it's connected to the grid, because it's not part of the primary grid. Um, so if we do that with no arguments, it should kick back basically at what you saw before. The numbers are going to be a little bit different because of the fact that uh, we're not looking at these ships that are connected now. Okay. So if you wanted to say, look at only the things on this grid and in cargo, right? Blocks with the word cargo in the name. You could do that. And it'll update here in a second. There you go. So yeah, so now we're only looking at things that are in the actual cargo containers in the base. So it's not looking at uh, inventory for things like, say, refineries or assemblers. So you notice the numbers are changing because we're, we're modifying these things. All right. So... Now let's talk about modifiers. Okay, so now you you know how the, the command works, you know how to target for grids, you know how to target for groups. Um, actually, I should say, so if I wanted to say uh, something, I was looking for inventory for a specific group. Let's say I had a cargo group of, you know, um, headquarters cargo group one or something like that. I would do G and then whatever the name is. So we'll say HQ. Actually, do this in quotes because it's multiple characters. HQ Cargo Group 1. And then that tells it that is the absolute title that you're looking for. Now, I don't have anything that's actually titled like that for the group, so it won't do anything. Um, but that's how you would use it if you wanted to target specific groups. Now, if you wanted to target specific groups on the local grid only, you could say TG colon whatever um, and then this basically the t is for the this grid the g is for the groups on this grid and then the the absolute value that you're looking for right okay uh, so what else can we do with this well we can also have multiple lcds you can, uh, basically if you have even if you're using white LCDs on their edge or you know, width-wise, however you want to, any LCD that's vertically stacked, you can actually have it span uh, the LCDs. Now, I'm not going to go into the details on that because it's not overly complicated. Just wanted to let you know that it is a, an option. Uh, one of the benefits of doing something like that is if you have a display that you have uh, you don't want scrolling, but you have multiple pages of data that you want to see. Like, say, if I didn't want this to be scrolling with that when I was doing a full display, what I could do is tag it so that it knows uh, which LCD is the first one, the second one, the third one, fourth one, whatever, and it'll actually treat them all as one LCD screen. Uh, so it'll let you span the screens really really useful for for the folks that like to pack right like me where you have just a lot of things going on at various points in time 
and it lets you to have everything on one in one column for as big as the column as you want to make. So if you don't want to reduce your font size, this is it's an option to be able to display things without having to use really small font, for an example. Uh, if you are using cockpits, all right, we're going to come over here so you can see this because it ignores it. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, that's like error. Edit text. There we go. All right. So if you're using cockpits, so now that cockpits have multiple displays in them, you would name the cockpit whatever you want it to be. We'll call it, you know, pilot seat. And you would again add the LCD tag to it. And then when you go into the cockpit, here, I'll see if we have one control seat here. So in the control seat, you have multiple displays, right? You have a large display top, for example. Uh, so what we can do is we're actually going to, let me rename this one. Reset me. So I remember to come back and reset this because I'm doing this in our live game. So, all right. So what you're going to do is you're going to come down here, select the screen and choose text and images just like you normally would. And then if I was doing this on the screen, it would be, you know, we'd add the LCD tag. Um, what you want to do then is go into the, where are you, custom data, just like you would normally. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say at, and then a number from zero to whatever the number of screens are. So if there's five screens, it'd be zero to four. Uh, remember programming zero, your, your first item is always at position zero. So for five items, it's zero to four. For three items, it's zero to two. Um, to four, we're just gonna say to some number, right? And then you want it to be auto LCD. So if we were doing this on the main screen of any block, you'd say at zero auto LCD, or actually, I guess you can do it this way. And then you do your command. So then it would be say inventory. All right. Uh, we'll say inventory S. We're going to tell it every, uh, we're going to say just this grid and we just want to see ingots, right? And then for the second screen, you'd be do at one auto LCD. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and do that. And then maybe this would be, say, power. And then for another screen, you would say, you know, whatever continue down until you're done with your screens. So the nice thing is, is that if you're using a custom um, cockpit block, if as long as it has everything done on the back end of it correctly, and you can actually use the scripts and everything with the, the uh, consoles or with the, the displays in the block, you can use the script for it. You don't have to have anything other than this one script to power everything LCD. You just have to remember to name the, the seat or cockpit block with the uh, open bracket, L, capital LCD, close bracket. Go into command or into custom data and you set your commands up. All right. Okay, so we've now talked about how to do groups, how to do the grids, the, that you can support multiple LCDs if they're in a vertical format how to support cockpits if you want to have a cockpit with real-time data on it. So let's start talking about what we can do with some of the, the more common commands. Um, so the command you've seen me using a lot so far is the inventory command. All right. So there's a couple of modifiers that you can use, and you can use these in combination um, with 
other commands or with other modifiers. So you could say S, which will, if you then do a um, account for uh, ingots, like if you do say plus ingot, show you here, Just wait for it to catch up. So what you don't get in here is you don't get the ore in the ingots area. So you only get the actual ingots and then they have it and they separate the ore out from it. Now, the reason this is important is because if you go in here, let's do inventory ingot. Actually, it's uh, inventory. Let's do that. And when it updates, I have to wait for it to catch up because it was scrolled down. It should catch up here in a second. There it is. Okay. So without the S, you get the ingots, but it also tells you how much ore is there. If you put the S on there, it's just the ingot. It doesn't tell you how much raw ore you have for that material type. Now this, I actually prefer it with the ore in here because that way I don't have to have an ore display as well as a uh, ingots summary. It's all in one group. It makes it much easier and uh, I, I prefer higher data density. Uh, but you know, some people only want to see the ingots and only want to see the ore. That's how you can do it. So it's, an, it's a nice little workaround. All right, so, so we talked about S, right? So there is also an X. What this will do is it will remove anything that has a zero line. So if you don't have any of a particular item, uh, let's go, where is it? Ingot. So you know how I have, I think it's magnesium. I don't have anything of. So now you only see the things that I actually have something of in inventory, but it's still showing the ore. So if you don't want ore in that line, you just add the S to it and it'll register it as a second modifier. And now you just see the ingots. All right. So some of the other things that you can do with it, let's get that out of here. Uh, there is a double N, which gets rid of all the numbers and leaves just the uh, the progress bars. There's an NB, which gets rid of the bars but leaves the numbers. And then you saw the other modifier for plus or minus. So if you wanted to do inventory overall and say, I don't want to see ingots, you just say minus ingot. And it catches up here in a second. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's go. Did it not like the command? Sometimes it doesn't like the command, so you just have to play around with it until you find a, a combination that works for you for what you want to display. Uh, yeah, it really doesn't like that. Okay, so let's go minus or. So the, the, this script does get updated fairly regularly. Uh, so you're going to want to pull the new copy of it whenever you can. And that's simply just going back into the programmable block and uh, rinsing and repeating the setup process. Man, you really don't like anything in there, do you? Okay, so that's everything. And now we should be able to go ingot. Yeah, it does not like that command. Weird. Okay. Well, see, learn something new every day, right? Okay. So let's move on from that. 
Okay, so there's also another way of looking at your inventory by looking at cargo. And th what this will do is, I'll show you. Uh, let's go everything. There you go. So this is going to give you a summary of the total cargo capacity, what, how much is actually main, uh, being utilized, and it'll give you a, a, prog a progress bar, the percentile bar down at the bottom. Now, this also has some of the same commands. So if you just want it to say, actually, I don't think I need that. All right. So if you want it, no bars, only the percentages, you would do cargo X. And that gives you just a quick summary. If you want it bars without the exact value, it gives you the percentage with the progress bar. And then if you do cargo bar, it's going to give you just the progress bar. So what this allows you to do is if you have, say, a, uh, a corner LCD or one of the, uh, the, the slimline LCDs, you can slap that on the side of your cargo container and have that uh, bar specifically tied to that cargo container using the same types of qualifiers that we were talking about before. Remember, it's always going to be the command, target block, and then your argument. So you could say, you know, specific name it something specific and unique. And what that will do is when you set it up, it'll tell you just the inventory on that particular bar or on that particular cargo block. So this is some of the ways that you can get a little bit more information out of what's there. Um, you know, it's it's kind of cool. There are mods that will do the same thing for you. Like I've got one installed that has a uh, visual indicator. Uh, it's basically doing the same thing that this script is doing, but that's in a complete mod and it changes all of your blocks. So if you don't want to have it so all of your blocks are set up like that, you only want to have monitoring on certain blocks, this would be a way to do that. All right. The next common one is power. Now I've talked about this one a lot. We were talking about how we've got the, uh, the power room set up. And this is the command, the basic command for what I generally do. It's going to tell you the power overview of everything connected to the grid. It's going to tell you what your current utilization is for the maximum production for each type of power block. So reactors, engines, solars, batteries. And then for the batteries, it also tells you um, what your stored power is, what your output power is, what your maximum utilization is, obviously. Um, input, output, and total output. So total output is actually across all of your power production. So um, generally speaking, the priority is solar panels, batteries, reactors, in that order. So if your solar panels aren't producing power, it'll, it, it fails over to batteries. If your batteries are empty, it fails over to reactors. Um, the reason for that is, is because reactors have become so much of a, I hate the expression, end game item, that they wanted to make it a little bit more manageable so you're not constantly eating uranium like you used to. But um, this also has a couple of modifiers on it. So if you do power X, that will give you no progress bars, only the percentage, just like with the cargo block. So that tells you what your power utilization percentages are. If you do capital P, this is going to give you the percentage with the bar without the exact volume. So you don't, or I'm sorry, without the exact power reading. So you don't know, you don't see the power utilization in numbers so if you've got you know two megawatts being used out of 200 megawatts you don't it'll show up as two percent you don't see the the divisor and then you can also say all bar which is one of the newer commands 
And that gives you basically what you saw before, just in a, uh, you know, a little bit more of a compact fashion. So it's actually supposed to be bars with no text. Did I? Hmm. Looks like that something may have changed in this again. Okay. All right. So next up is power stored. Now this one has all of the same functionalities. So the uh, modifiers, so X and P, just like power does. Um, and then you also have a new one, which is V, which we'll talk about here in a second. But that'll show you just for power stored is just a battery report. This is nice because you can have, um, again, you can have just a system set up for monitoring just your batteries without having to see all of your power stuff. Um, again, it just comes down to how you want to use it. Uh, these are things that I use fairly frequently and you'll, you'll see them throughout a lot of my builds. So if we do power stored V. So that just tells you, you know, how much power is actually there without worrying about what your percentages are and everything else. You sh this way you can tell at a glance without having to worry about everything that, you know, getting uh, data overflow, as it were. Right. The next one that I like is charge. And I don't think, okay, yeah, it is. So because we're not we're not looking at just this grid, it's looking at the connected grids. So it's seeing our jump drive on our, our new scout ship. And it tells us that it's 100% charged and it tells us how much power is actually there. So now we can actually modify this. Again, we can use the X command and it just tell, it gives us the raw percentage. If we get rid of that and you bar, there you go. And that just gives you the, the bar with no text. Uh, so next is a command that I use more frequently than I actually talk about on camera. Um, I use docked. And what this does is it will show you connectors and what's connected to them. Now, it's like, okay, you know, it's like, you know, Lunar Base 1, Lunar Base 1, Lunar Base 1. It doesn't tell you a whole lot. So what you want to do is actually tailor this a little bit. Uh, actually, let's go here. Let's grab, let's see, something that has, uh, yeah, there you go. We're going to grab this one, All right? Okay, so we're going to say docked. Uh, we're going to do this up on here because I want it to be that specific name. Oh, okay, connector's found. Let's see here. Are you gonna? Do I not need to? I may not need the quotes anymore. Yep, don't need the quotes anymore. Okay. So if we go. that okay and so that's telling me that we have things connected out there on that connector now if I wanted to know which one it was what I could do is use a combination of things I could say center which is going to center any text that follows it on the same line and we'll say, 
like that. Okay, so my text is a little bit skewed because we've got a padding in there. Let's get that out. And so that what that would allow me to do is to label connectors in the script and then have it return a value on that on that label for me. Um, and then if I want to put spacing in there, you just say echo and that will enter a blank line for us. Right. Now, echo for those who have ever done anything with term, uh, like mainframe terminals and stuff, this is also a print to screen command is basically what it is. And so when you do echo with nothing, it just returns a blank line. If you put something in there, it'll put literally whatever you type in there. So that's basically how you get extra lines in here. So if you wanted to do things where you had some kind of divider, you could do something like that and then say, you know, multiple lines of echo. That should give us a blank with a separator with a blank. So, so there's just ways that you can format things, make it easier for yourself. Uh, there's also a version of this uh, called Occupied. And I wanted to do that. And what this will allow you to do is you can actually tag in um, specific blocks. Uh, I don't think I have anything. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything set up to use this right now. So, but there are a lot of commands that you can do. Uh, one of the. So coming back to docked for just a moment. So the modifiers, there's the capital E. What this will do is it'll show you empty connectors. So you're going to get a list. So anything that's empty has a dash in it, right? You can then say CN. And again, you can use these, you can use modifiers stacked if you want to, like we're doing here. And this should show all connectors the ship is connected to. So now you can see the connector and what's connected to it. And that is really rough to read, so let's go. There we go. And we'll fly up here so you can see a little bit better. So what this allows you to do is have it all on one line. And then, like I said, you do have things like occupied, which will tell you something. So if you have, say, um, the cryo chambers, you can actually group all your cryo chambers together and tell it to look at all your cryo chambers and say, is it occupied or not? And that way you can actually see at a glance, you know, if somebody's in the in their cryopod, if you're doing things with multiplayer specifically, those types of those types of things become much more useful. Uh, there's also the if somebody is in a chair, say you're doing something in multiplayer, they ground down a chair and a hostile is in a chair you can actually see the chair because if they don't go in and change the name uh, you can actually see the chair that's being occupied or if it's a friendly and you just want to know where people are so if, uh, like if you're on a ship it's useful because if you're going to get ready to jump to if you're going to use the jump drive if they're not in the, if their butt's not in the seat they get left behind this that will allow you, that will allow you to very quickly see if your chairs are occupied or not. Okay, so that's the grid and occupy, or docked and occupy, rather. Now there's another one that is fun called working. And we're gonna get a giant spam. So what this does is it will look at any and all blocks, uh, either specifically targeted or everything on the grid. 
it'll tell you what the block is and what its status is. So if it's a, if it's a block that has an on off status, it'll tell you whether it's on or off. If there's like a battery, it'll tell you what the, the charge percentages are. Um, if it's something like a refinery or an assembler, it'll tell you if it's working, idle or off. So as you can see here, the refinery, basic refineries five and six are idle. But if I turn them off, it'll say they're off. Um, but it'll even look at yield blocks, basically anything that has a power or a um, occupant, uh, a busy stat or a busy state, I should say. It'll report that information for you. So this is another way you can figure out if things are like doors. It'll tell you if they're open or closed, um, lights on or off. You know that kind of stuff really good system for again specifically for building um, status reports or security reports on your systems because you can say working door and it'll tell you if the doors are open closed on or off so it, you know that's a it's a good way to know where th what things are going on on your in your ships or bases without having to run all over the place to find out uh, another one that I like is the details block and we're going to go jump drive. It should. Right, so let's go here. Ah, oh, there it is. Okay. So this one when you do details, what it will do is it'll tell you the name of the block, the type of the block. In this case, what the max input and max store, stored powers are, what the current input is, how much power is actually stored in it, and the uh, recharge time. Basically, what details does, as if we go in here really quick, is this little data block here, it prints it out to a screen. Um, makes it really useful so that, again, it's one of those, it just gives you more information about what's going on. So you don't have to be in the, um, the, the UIs and menus to find the information you need to make decisions on what you're doing with your vehicles. This one's a, a, a nice command that I actually use entirely too much. <laughs> Because what you can do is you can say, if you do details X, that'll take out the uh, the type block. And if you do no N, that takes out the name. So when it updates now, uh, did you not take? Uh, it doesn't, oh. Really? Let me try that. Wait for it to update. Because um, the X is supposed to allow you to stack. Maybe this this one might be. Uh... Yeah, it's a uh, that one's modifier sensitive. So you have to do the no. You have to do it in order. So no name and then uh, X to take out the item type. But again, you could throw a small text LCD up on the side of your jump drive and have it display just the current statuses on that jump drive. And then the last one we're going to talk about is the amount set. All right, so we're going to say... Now, I, I placed a temporary turret in the base. See if it's gonna find it. Um, specifically, just to do this, and I may not need the asterisk anymore. See, I'm used to having to tell it to find everything with, the, you know, a particular setup. Mine, there it is, and that's telling me that it's empty. Now, if I had ammo in it, it would tell me how many units of ammo I have out of the maximum capacity which I want to say is like 140 or something, like that, 240 or I don't remember now. Um, but it'll tell you how much you have. So um, 
I haven't done a whole lot with weapons this playthrough, but when we get into vehicles where we are where we are going to start having weapons like turrets and missiles and all of those things, we don't want to be guessing how much ammo is on board. So what we're going to have is a display like this that'll tell us, you know, at a glance, how much ammo do we have on hand. And when you combine this in with the, say, cockpit stuff, you can then have a cockpit LCD that does nothing but track weapon statuses. So you can have one panel that has working turrets or working whatever you want to name your weapons, and then another one that has the amount for those same weapons. So you can see at a glance, are your weapons turned on? If they are, how much ammo is in there? So this is... Uh, yeah, this is just the primer on this script. The script is amazing for how much stuff it can actually do and handle. Um, I will put links to both the, uh, the workshop page for the script as well as the workshop page for the, um, well, it's the, the forum files detail for this on Steam for the user manual. Go through the manual take a look at it i mean there's probably like i don't know maybe 100 commands that you can use um it does everything from like telling you like just oxygen to all tanks to being able to format the text uh you can do time time date stamps and they've got like 40 different ways of displaying your time and date you know there's if you've got uh, bullions running on the back end like if you're running custom scripts or custom blocks that allow you to run bulls you can actually have bull reports running um, there's the power used power stop you know all of these things that you can do it's an amazing script and it's ridiculously useful especially for the folks that like to have a lot of detail in what's going on in their bases or ships um, actually let's go this way because, like I said, I use it all the time. All those LCDs in there, running that script. <laughs> all the way back down here in our uh, manufacturing area, we've actually set up a huge report network over here. I'll show this to you. You know, so I can see everything that's going on at any point in time in my base makes it so much nicer especially like when you bring back ridiculous amounts of resources and you need to know what's being produced and how much of things you have on hand i can sit in a chair leave it i don't ever really care about the basic refineries i just worry about the rest of it um but i can look at i can sit here leave it like this and go do things around the house while things while this is running and processing stuff or making things and i don't have to come back and look at the sub menus i can come in look at the screen and see exactly where what's going on and if i need to, to step in to do something i can do so if not i can continue on with my day amazing script Links will be down in the description, and we're going to get out of here. I want to thank you all for stopping in. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I know I rambled a little bit in here. I apologize for that, but uh, if you did enjoy it, you know the routine. Hit those likes, subscribes, pass it around to your friends and family. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get out of here. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Enjoy the rest of your Monday, and we will see you back here on Wednesday for more Space Engineers. As always, folks, take care and be safe out there, everybody.